झुणका भाकरी नाव डेज इज व्हेरी कॉमन थिंग अवेलेबल इन महाराष्ट्र इव्हन इन बिग रेस्टॉरंट व्हॉट इज झुणका झुणका इज अ काइंड ऑफ खरी मेड आउट ऑफ फाईनली ग्राउंडेड ग्राउंड फ्लॉवर अँड इट हॅज सम स्पायसेस व्हेरी बेसिक स्पायसेस इट कॅन बी मेड इन डिफरंट कन्सिस्टन्सी वेन इट इज बिट थिन नॉट सुपी बट थिन ग्रेव्ही लाईक थिंग इट इज कॉल्ड एज पिठलर इट गोज वेल विथ राईस ॲज वेल वेन इट इज ड्राय इट बिकम झुणका झुणका इज लाईक टेकन ॲज अ टिफिन काइंड ऑफ थिंग सो वेन फार्मर्स दे दे गो ऑन देअर फार्म्स दे कॅरी भाकरी दॅन बिट ऑफ ऑनियन बिकॉज दे आर वर्किंग ऑन हार्ट सनलाईट अँड हीट सो वॉट ऑनियन डज इज लाईक यू नो इट कूल्स ऑफ युअर बॉडी इट गिव्ज यू सम न्यूट्रियंट्स ॲज वेल सम मिनरल्स दे कॅरी बिट स्पायसी चटणी अँड दॅट्स इट सो दॅट दॅट इज अ टिफिन नाव वॉट इज भाकरी भाकरी इज नथिंग बट अ ब्रेड विच इज रोस्टेड ऑन नेकेड फ्लेम इट हॅज व्हेरी नाईस लाईक यू नो फ्लेवर विच कम्स आउट ऑफ दिस रोस्टिंग अँड इट इज मेड आउट ऑफ आयदर सॉरघम और मिलेट फ्लॉवर and that is jowari or bajri it has more nutrients than your wheat flour it has fibers so it is good on stomach as well and it says almost every day thing for these farmers so first we'll start with bhakri what i'm going to do is like now i have started heating some water here now why i'm doing this generally when when that flour is very fresh lukewarm water is enough but what happens like you know as it is transported and like kept in containers and it goes and stays there for a while it loses that stickiness and that bhakri while making it breaks and when these ladies these farmer ladies they are expert believe me they'll just do on the hand and it is is quite quite difficult so let's start with this i'll take to this is like you know maybe half cup equivalent so a cup full of flour because i'll be making some three or four bhakris out of it pinch of salt now what i'm going to do is like you know i'll mix this water slowly onto this flour this is jowar flour i'm adding that into this and it's so hot so i can't i can't literally put my hand into it so first i'll mix it properly and here you have to keep in mind like you know this consistency is very very crucial see i want made it thin and all that thing can you see it's making that dough on its own so if you have planetary mixer that's the best thing keep doing in this i'm kneading this flour so it will make it bit sticky kind of dough it's not too sticky when i'm using this word sticky i'm just talking about relative term now is knead it like this so it is giving nice sticky consistency and the trick to make this bhakri is like don't raise this flour for a long period of time if you raise it it's gone now i am going to make three equal bowls dough now i'm going to pound this flour and make a thin roti out of it or thin bread out of it so for that i need a little bit of water so i'll start pounding this bhakri yeah so this bhakri bread is ready so i'll just check like you know whether tawa is hot yeah it's hot next thing is slowly this is very tricky i am going to leave that like this it will go on that and i'll apply just a little bit of water now why we apply this water on this bakri while it is getting cooked first thing is like you know while we are pounding we'll make it smooth that is one thing and if i don't do this what happens is that this surface starts becoming drier and drier and when it becomes dry it will crack and it will not puff up i'll just wait for this surface to get bit dry you have to learn these tricks like you know judgments on all that thing so this is the trick now it's getting dry i'll just try to lift it up yeah it's getting lifted 
even I can smell that flower is having like you know that woody burning smell, very nice smell. Next step is turn it down. Okay, so now this is done, I can easily remove it, very important part. Now I will have to put it this way. So, just on high heat, see bhakri is done and this is a good sign. If you want to check like you know whether that person can make good bhakris, this is the sign. After every bhakri, you have to clean your tawa or this griddle very thoroughly. Just take this cloth, just rub it, remove excess flour and all. What happens is like about this flour, I said like you know it should not be resting for so much of longer period of time. It should be done almost like immediately. I will show you what I have done. I have taken just little bit of water, I have made this dough like this, bit flat some flour on this surface. Now consistency of this like you know very soft and tender and nice. Now again I am going to pound this. Now if you can see like you know this, these edges here they are cracked on this bakri, first bakri. But here because I have kneaded and like you know kneaded on my hand and all it is with less cracks and all. I have lifted this bakri like this, goes like this little bit of water. I remember one thing like you know my mom used to always give me this jowar and she used to say Makran just make sure like you know that atta wala, that, that chakki wala he is not mixing two flowers together. I used to wonder like you know why she is so fussy about it. But the thing is like you know if other kind of flowers or something like you know they get mixed with this it will not make good bhakris. It is puffing up. Done. As we have roasted this on naked flame, yeah, it gives those sort of like you know spots, burnt spots, but it gives such a nice smoky flavor and taste to it. Now I am going to make zunka. For that, we need finely chopped onion. Now, this onion is very big, so for four people. Half of this onion is more than enough. Three chilies here. Now this particular chili, like you know, when I tasted it, it has real good heat. So I'm not putting too much of it, otherwise it will spoil the taste. Just few pieces of that. I'm not chopping it finely. The reason is like you know, if, if that small piece goes onto your tongue, it will burn literally. Next, few cloves of garlic. That's it peel the skin off and while I am doing this, I will be hitting my wok. Now why I am using wok, actually we should use skillet or kadai. Good thing about wok is it has very thin metal, so it is iron thing, it absorbs heat very fast. I will be using this to make this pitla, you can use skillet obviously. What I need here, bit of mustard seeds then pinch of this asafoetida. To make this I have to add bit of more oil. I am going to put these mustard seeds in that. See it started spluttering because wok as I said like you know say it just absorbs the heat quickly. Then crushing it like this, add that onto it. Then I am going to add this asafoetida or hing. Now why we use this hing there, when we use this gram flour or chana flour, sometimes it is very heavy on your stomach, it is just a, a very hard to digest for so many people. With asafoetida, it is carminative and it has some digestive properties as well. Add the chilies now, even you can add into that oil beforehand. But I just did not want to burn it and like you know bring out more flavors of that because it will be too hot then. While this is getting done, what I am going to do is like I will prepare that batter for this pitla. For that you need cup full of chana flour or gram flour, teaspoonful of your turmeric, pinch of this asafoetida, half teaspoon of red hot chili powder and salt to taste. I have taken this cup full of gram flour, add this asafoetida. I like asafoetida, it, it gives real nice flavor to it. Sometimes in this junka or pitla, 
little bit of cumin powder is added as gram flour is very heavy on your stomach because of this cumin powder or even cumin tempering or this asafoetida it becomes very light to digest very easy to digest then turmeric half teaspoon of this hot chili powder bit of a salt the trick about this flour I am going to mix this together in water I am going to use this whisk this is real nice tool so with the whisk what happens is like you know I can easily mix it there are no lumps left in that so I am thoroughly mixing this yeah it is done if you do not want lumps at all you have to rest it just for a while just couple of minutes and that is enough this onion has become mushy it is cooked properly that garlic has, give, has given nice flavor to it and onto it I am going to add this and mix this together once it gets cooked do not do not keep it raw if it is raw like you know your stomach will have cramps and pains and everything so you have to be very careful and obviously asafoetida is the is the remedy for that so can you see it is becoming thicker and thicker so when it becomes thick like this it is called a zunka and if I make consistency bit sort of gravy kind of consistency it will be pitla and now what I need to do just for a while cover it so that it will get cooked properly and that is it so it has cooked properly that is done I am garnishing it with coriander now I will serve this junka bhakri to you guys with some sliced onions and a special coconut and garlic red hot chutney it tastes yum believe me <laughs>